so japanese encephalitis uh, is a tropical fever which is more common uh, in the you know south part uh, of india coastal forest belts okay so again it is an arboreal born this thing and uh, it it can occur 5 to 15 days after uh, uh, the bite and uh, as it says it is encephalitis uh, encephalitis uh, will a uh, patient with japanese encephalitis comes with fever altered sensorium headache diarrhea and uh, even sometimes paralysis of uh, some of the body parts uh, again there is no antiviral treatment it's a self limiting disease and you have to support the body until the patient uh, comes out of the uh, severe part of the disease okay so the other uh, interesting uh, tropical fever you can see in the tropical illness you see in the icu is meningitis so i'll just tell you a brief case narration okay so just one week back we had a 65 year old female uh, who was uh, living by living with her husband her children live in uh, uh, other part of the country and uh, she was and her husband were living by themselves they are retired couple and uh, this lady uh, comes with a history she came on uh, i think uh, 28th of november and um, uh, 27th of uh, november also she was apparently fine she spoke to her uh, son and uh, even wished him his ha uh, wished him his happy birthday and uh, on 28th uh, somehow since morning she was feeling unwell she was a uh, uh she was uh, feeling unwell she was complaining of some vague things and by evening uh, she was completely drowsy that is what the person who was taking care the local guardian the local nephew of the elderly woman uh, gave history that uh, she was completely she is completely in altered uh, altered state and he has brought her here and on initial evaluation uh, the complaints uh, were uh, the patient was having fever altered sensorium and uh, i clinically examined the patient and uh, in, in, during the clinical uh, during the during the clinical examination what i felt was she was having neck stiffness she was having a lot of neck stiffness so so due to she having a lot of neck stiffness and this neck stiffness uh, uh, gave me recollection of the triad of meningitis so triad of meningitis is fever altered sensorium neck stiffness immediately we uh, got a brain done because we had to rule out uh, many other causes of altered sensorium and fever and we had to anyway we have to plover planning for a csf uh, analysis and we had to rule out any uh, increased features of increased intracranial pressure so we had done a cd brain cd brain uh, was a uh, we didn't do an mri because she was unstable at that time so we did a cd brain cd brain was a uh, showing mild cerebral edema pretty much that's it and more than that you will not get any other thing you'll only get uh, negative history no no bleeding no big old infarcts so um, at no other any other space occupying lesions so uh, this patient uh, immediately we started her on uh, iv antibiotic therapy so in harrison it is clearly written meningitis is a medical emergency you don't need to wait for the csf report for uh, starting an antibiotic if any patient is having fever altered sensorium and neck stiffness and you have reasonable belief that patient, patient is having meningitis you can start an antibiotic Med meningitis is a medical emergency okay so first thing that uh, we did was we started through the station we took blood cultures then we have given uh, iv antibiotics so the drug of choice for community acquired meningitis in india is uh, ceftriaxone cephalosporin ceftriaxone um, ceftriaxone and uh, vancomycin and uh, is the drug of choice for community acquired meningitis we can add acyclovir as well in elderly patients so that is the three important drugs uh, after uh, you get the csf reports for example if the csf uh, report shows uh, uh, more uh, amount of uh, cells low glucose more cells more protein it's going towards bacterial so based on the csf cellularity you can tell whether it's a bacterial or a viral meningitis and you can continue the scene okay so the as per the indian society of critical care medicine the current therapy uh, there is a 
article in Indian Journal of Critical Care Medicine that says antimicrobial therapy usage in ICU. So for community acquired meningitis, the drug of choice is ceftriaxone vancomycin. And if viral is considered suspected, acyclovir as well. And some cases uh, you can give uh, meropenem as well, but uh, you have to give uh, ceftriaxone or meropenem, you have to give higher doses, two grams. Th those are the meningitic doses uh, that will help in uh, adequate CSF penetration. Although the meninges are uh, quite open during inflammation of the meninges. So when we are coming to rabies, uh, rabies is again uh, virus transmitted infected by saliva through bite wound. So we have seen a uh, few uh, cases of rabies these days in uh, patients who uh, have gone trekking. So these days uh, there is a lot of uh, trekking activity going on everywhere. People who don't uh, who don't even walk to their office, uh, people are uh, going to trekking uh, into mountains, forest area. Completely, uh, they are uh, not habited to those kind of terrain. They are going uh, for as a guided tours or treks. And we have seen uh, rabies happen, especially when people are going into contact with uh, uh, some wild animals like wolves uh, and some uh, wild dogs and uh, bats. So it usually affects the central nervous system and is caused by uh, bite of an infected uh, animal mammal. So fever, cough, sore throat, seizures, hallucinations, hydrophobia, is all uh, features of uh, rabies. And uh, there are post-exposure prophylaxis. You can take uh, shots. Uh, okay, you can uh, take PEP prophylaxis after exposure. Uh, then uh, we are going to tetanus. Tetanus is an all-important infection in uh, these days because, uh, again, uh, tracking, I told you, Major for majority of the people are vaccinated for tetanus, but some people forget to take a booster dose after five or six years. And uh, these people again go for some kind of trek and uh, usually barefooting in the forest has become a fashion. And uh, there is some uh, a nail or a sharp object which penetrates into the body and they present with uh, tetanus. So um, basically tetanus is having, uh, tetanus has a very good prevention, but once it uh, patient is infected, the prognosis is very poor. There is a, a difficulty maintaining airway and uh, breathing, and uh, patient will have uh, muscle spasms and uh, uh, you know laryngospasms, and uh, many of the times uh, prognosis is guarded. So for tetanus, uh, again, antibiotics are used for the wound and uh, for systemic uh, infection. And uh, chlorpromazine and dizepam can be used for uh, controlling muscle contractions. So intestinal parasites, again, uh, we are having, uh, they can be considered a tropical infections. We have uh, Antamoeba histolytica, we'll have uh, Vucheraria bun, we'll have uh, Antamoeba histolytica, we'll have ringworm, tapeworm. So again, uh, mode of spread is because of uh, contaminated food and water. And uh, symptoms are uh, stomachache, chronic fatigue, diarrhea, fever, dizziness. So we have again uh, antiparasitic drugs. They they are they include uh, uh, you know pentoin, metronidazole, and other drugs. And uh, cholera again is very much uh, seen. Uh, three days back uh, we had a patient of cholera. In his stool came cholera, vibrio cholerae positive. And uh, they usually present with uh, profuse diarrhea, profuse diarrhea. I mean, they will lose four to five liters of water per day through diarrhea, loose stools. And uh, um, main uh, stay of treatment will be uh, identifying cholera. Identifying, if once you identify, immediately seek the treatment. But cholera has a good uh, report, good uh, success rates for treatment. Only thing is uh, lack of awareness of the patient is having cholera. Sometimes you may omit the important antibiotics which are required for treatment of cholera. <laughs>